Hi everyone, hope you're well and welcome back to the Uncollapsible Project. This has been a big project of mine for a couple of years and actually it's been more than a year since I've released the last episode. But for those of you who are new to the channel, here's a brief explanation of what it is and where we got to so far. The original idea was to create an uncollapsible paraglider. And when I first did a video on that, it had a lot of views and a lot of people commented that uh, the reasons why this might not be a good idea. And almost everyone thought I meant I wanted to make the paraglider structure more rigid or to physically preventing it from being able to collapse, kind of like a hang glider. But this was not my idea at all. The idea was to leave the paraglider structure exactly the same, but using sensors and electronics to help the pilot fly better. So if you consider an example of two different pilots flying the same wing in the same conditions, on one side you have a very experienced pilot that knows the air and knows the wing and can sense that a collapse is about to happen and takes appropriate action with the brakes, not too much, not too little and as soon as possible. And on the other side you have a novice pilot that hasn't developed those skills yet so only realizes that collapse is happening much later and overreacts and creates a way too big input for what is necessary. So the heads of both pilots work the same. They have to sense, compute and correct. But the experienced pilot can do this much faster than the novice pilot. So my proposal was to use technology to help us with these things. So with that I started with the sensors and being able to measure line tension in flight was my objective. So for that, I went back to school to learn about forces and sensors that can measure those forces and decided to use strain gauges on the Malons themselves to measure line tension. The Malons worked okay, but only when the gate was open. So that was a compromise that I wasn't willing to make. So I pretty much spent the last year and a half looking for the right sensors, designing my own, looking for manufacturers and suppliers, testing them until I got to this. We also moved countries and we moved house three times in the process, so it took a little while to get back to it. But these ones are looking really promising. So let's cue the montage to get them ready and go to the beach. Okay, so back to present day, I uh, have the electronics ready, I'm going to set up the kite and I'm going to set up the load cells the same as last time, one on each line and uh, see how it goes. I was a bit reluctant as it's hard to do everything and film, but yeah, it works. Had a couple of twists in the line, so that's easy to get out. And uh, as it was very windy, I was trying to stay up there, out of the power zone, because I've had one of these lines break before on me. So it's good for testing that it's windy, but it might be a bit on the limit of the kit. So here I was doing this blind, really. Uh, I was trying to make a test that was not too long, not too short, but enough to capture some data. Some seagulls that came to play as well. One interesting thing is that the tension on the line always rises before the kite actually turns. And sometimes if I turn very fast, it almost feels like it's mismatched. So I pull left and it goes right, but it's actually not this. When I pull left, you see the bar go up and then the kite turns left. And this is good news for the paraglider because it means if we want to sense collapses, 
it's very likely that we'll be able to see a drop in tension before the wing actually collapses. And here, because I had the camera fixed, I just moved away to the right hand side and I was trying to fly right on the edge of the wind window. So not so much power. So we can see a bit better what's happening to the kite. And even though it was really windy, managed to land it really nicely. So got lucky there. Okay, so I think that worked fairly well. You guys obviously know more than me because editing, but uh, I think I'm gonna rig up it to the seed uh, but yes, it's very windy today, so the the kite, I've noticed, I had a quick look through the data, I think one of the lines had 10 kilos on at one point, so that's a lot of wind for this kite. So, a bit too much for the big wing. Uh, I might get the seed, and just because I haven't had the time to think about the whole system, how to connect it to the A's or the B's, so the lines that are actually fixed to the risers, so I'm going to try to put them in the brakes, and that might give us some uh, interesting information. Okay, all rigged up. All I've done was to uh, attach the uh, load sensors with some extra handles, uh, not to the brake handle itself, but to the knot of the brake handle. Uh, so it means that the brake, I have a tiny little bit less range, but the seat has a very short brake travel anyway. So that shouldn't be an issue at all. Uh, so yeah, let's do it. As you can probably tell, I was really excited at this point because uh, it's, I've been so long working on this project and this is the first time I'm actually taking some measurements from an actual paraglider. So I went close to the hill because there's a bit more wind. And there you go, it's working. The right and left correspond to the right side and left side of the wing itself. So if you were flying, basically your right hand and your left hand. Uh, sometimes it can get confusing because of reverse launching and etc but bear in mind it's the brakes on the actual wing. So I kited it up the hill and tried to keep the tests uh, simple to start with. Putting it on the side and you can see actually it's, a, it's, um, it's actually a good way to visualize uh, brake dissociation where uh, often you have uh, beginners try to do these exercises and try to control their wing side to side and more often than not they don't release enough the other brake so in this case you're pulling with the right and you want to not always but for the most part let go of the left quite a bit so you can actually see it quite well there And I get bored with that and decide to just go up the hill. You'll notice as well that uh, staying in the same place in higher wind, because up there is a lot higher wind than down there, uh, the sum of both brakes is actually uh, considerably higher. So you have to pull more tension on the brakes to keep the wing in the same place. And here I decide to go for a little flight little turbulence in the air but nothing too bad. Here I put some input on purpose to see how the brake pressure relates to the pitch and then a big flare and release so that you don't kill the wing. It works really well and then decided to do just a couple more uh, runs so I could see uh, what's happening with the takeoffs and the landings on the brakes a bit better. So this is still early days, but a huge success and it really uh, really gives me the motivation to carry on with this project. And I think the uh, next steps are gonna be trying to get more sensors, uh, potentially upgrading the computing power, adding a screen and uh, yeah, lots of things to do next to, to improve it. And obviously with the ultimate objective of actually measuring it in flight. Hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. Uh, I want to thank all these amazing people on Patreon for supporting this video and the channel. 
Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.